Insider, and welcome to this workshop about Suzanne Ciani's Bukla Cookbook in VCV Rack. We will work on building a performance-oriented modular system. We will discuss live technique and improvisation. But first, let's ask ourselves the question, what does any of this even mean? Suzanne Ciani is a classical trained composer first known as a pioneer of electronic music with her live performances on a Bukla 200 in the 70s. She later made a career in composing for advertisement, TV, documentary and sound effects. Meanwhile, she releases many albums of new age and piano music. Only a few years ago she went back to electronic music performances on a Bukla 200E. Now a Bukla system is an electronic instrument named after its creator Don Bukla. It combines many unusual sound synthesis method and performances tool. It is associated with West Coast avant-garde music of the 60s and the 70s. While there were many Bukla instruments, we are going to focus on the 200 system, which is a collection of modules created in the 70s, and also its 2005 modern reissue, the 200E. Now, what about the cookbook? Well, in 1976, Mrs. Chani wrote a 40-page paper for the national endorsement where she described with much details her system and her patching technique. At the time of the birth of modular music, most of the techniques were uh, unique to her style and never been described before. Funny enough, this very document allows her to relearn her instrument after a 40-year break. This document is one of the most interesting read that a modern composer can have. Mrs. Cheney has always been very generous describing her method, whether by screening close shots of her system during her live performances, or by participating to many in-depth lectures with younger audiences. It is truly incredible to see how all the topics she covered in 1976 are now the major issues for composer who wants to perform live-generated modular music. And now about VCV Rack. In order to cover the cookbook, the only two things you need is a Bukla 200 and a quadraphonic system as most people can't afford both a place to live and a bukla, and the Eurac clones are also quite out of my range, using the free software VCV Rack was a natural choice for an educative project. As for now, there is no official bukla module in VCV Rack, though some of them come close, but most of the time we will patch a few basic building blocks together to make our own bukla system. Now let's have a look about what is to come. First we will build and patch a fixed rack inspired by Mrs. Chiani's system. Then we will go through each of the techniques she described in the cookbook. The rhythmic relief, the vertical sequencer, the string patch and the keyboard rotation. We will see how to chain them together as seamlessly as possible. We will discuss rhythmic improvisation and specialization. We will end up by looking at how our recent work and setup evolved and how it translates in VCV Rec. Before we start, a short disclaimer. The cookbook starts with the ingredients, a list of modules from Mrs. Chani's system and how they are patched together. The idea behind this patch is to have a well-defined and organized space to later develop the musical idea that will drive her performances. She highlights the combination of pre-planned work and improvisation how important it is for a performer to learn and practice a patch 
rehearse so you will be able to improvise better. In the Bukla word, the sound and CV path are clearly separated. So let's start with the sound path. Usually, Bukla is synonym of complex oscillator, wave folding, frequency modulation and super fast low pass gates. There will be none of that. Mrs. Chiani's system is aiming for tonal music and the sound path is pretty simple. But don't worry, we will have our fair share of complications. The main sound sources are the three sections of the dual oscillator. As you see, it is a simple oscillator with CV controlled wave shaper that turns a sine wave into a ramp or a square. We will use Bleak from Vult, which has a wave shaper. We should adjust the wave shape modulation to taste. We will need two frequency input to respect the original patch. We also need a noise section of the source of uncertainty. We will come to that later, but a simple white noise will do. All of this is going into the matrix mixer, so every sound source can be mixed and sent into any destination. We will take the one from Bug Audio. As a bonus sound source, we will send two oscillators inside a frequency shifter. We will use the frequency shifter from Squinky Labs. I would be awfully bad at explaining what it does in a technical point of view, but the cat on the illustration does it much better than I ever could. We will have a rich and harmonious tone when the oscillator are tuned together, and extreme sound effect when they are dissonant. One must make sure of the tuning of the oscillator before bringing this in the game. When it comes to filters, Mrs. Chiani uses a dual bandpass filter that we will replace by two Vult Instabile, which I love for their wide range of sound. They will be the key element in the making of the famous Ocean Wave effect. She also uses a 10 channel com filter, which is a bank of fixed filter at different frequency. It is used here as a tone shaper for a single input and output. We will use the bug audio PEQ6. Everything is then going into the four low pass gates. Thankfully we have a clone from Nisti. We will also add one channel that goes directly from the destination mixer. We are now free to send any blend of any sound source in any destination mix them at will. It is now time for quadriphony with the spatial director. It is a mixing console with four inputs and four outputs and the CV control reverb. The four sound sources can be set and animated in a quadriphonic space. In VCV we are again lucky to have the Nisti quad panner. Each instance can be chained together to create a mixer. 
Of course, we are facing the limitation of a quad system in stereo. You can mix the front and rear together, or you can use the front outputs only. And the second dimension acts as a volume control. Now for the CV path. We will go from top to bottom of the schematics as we will dig deeper into the mystery of Bukla. The four low pass gates are controlled by four envelope generator. In the Bukla world, an envelope generator is usually a rise and fall function. It can be triggered or sustained by the gate input and it can also be looped to become an LFO. This specific module allows to control the general length. We have a similar module in the NIST collection. The four envelopes control the four low pass gates. Mrs. Jenny explained that she bridges all the duration input together and use an other module to offset the envelope length. We can set a similar patch and control every envelope with one knob, but with different strength. We can also make a feedback loop and use one of the envelope instead of the knob. Another key element of any bookless system is the source of uncertainty. Once again, NISTI provides something close. The source of uncertainty produces random voltages of any sort that you would expect. Random gates, random step voltage, random smooth voltage. It will become a very useful tool in the forthcoming patches technique. The oscillators are controlled in different ways, including a chromatic keyboard with a twist. Bukla was able to simulate polyphony by using an interesting sample and hold module. It includes the usual suspect, but also a polyphonic input and a switch for the number of voices. To my understanding of the cookbook, this mysterious section would actually be a shift register a chain of sample and hold that will sample the incoming value at the first trigger to the first output and then pass this value to the next output at the next trigger. Our exploration of the cookbook will require to switch between two and three voice. We will then use the ML modules to build a similar system. I will link the input to my keyboard and add three outputs to each oscillator. We now have programmed a CV and get general input that sends to a single voice shift register, also known as sample and out, then true and three voice. switch it to a single set of outputs and we can freely choose between the three flavors of polyphony. We'll have a break here and we'll continue on the next episode with the melodic core of the setup. The incredible duet of the sequential voltage source and the multiple arbitrary function generator. Thank you for watching up to there. I'll be happy to have you back in the next episode. Meanwhile, 
you'll find many useful things in the description, including the VCV patch, the link to the cookbook, some interesting lectures of Suzanne Ciani, the modular grid link to her former and current setup. See you in the next episode.